So you think the stock market's heading down and you wanna make some money off of it, but you don't wanna short stocks. Here's three strategies in this video that we're gonna cover where we talk about different ways that you can make money when the stock market's falling. Now, the standard advice is no one should try to time the market. And of course, that's very sound advice. Really, if you're a beginner or anyone that's not paying attention to the markets, really, it's about having your money be invested and have the time of the market work itself out and eventually stocks will bounce back up. But, hey, I completely understand for those that want to you know, play in this game called the stock market, they're competitive, they wanna beat that market return. I'm guilty of this myself. Although I have a majority of my investments in those passive index funds, there is also a part of me that has a separate account that I use for more, I would say, my hobby investing, right? So this is the account that I'm trying to prove myself, kind of just like beat on my chest and say, hey, maybe I can beat the market, so I'm gonna apply all these different strategies, whether it be option strategies, or maybe buying some put options. It doesn't matter. Basically, in that one account, I'm trying to beat the market, and I feel like you're trying to do the same by timing the market and trying to play it to the downside. So the first strategy that we're gonna talk about is buying inverse ETF. So this is like buying a stock from the long side, but instead of making money when the stock market is going up, it is actually inverses and you make money when the stock market goes down. So you're buying into someone else that's managing this fund and they're basically doing the shorting for you where the fund makes money on the downside. So really you're just kind of attaching yourself to that investment and you as well can make money from the downside. So we'll hop over to the computer and look at some inverse ETFs to show you kind of what we're looking at. So if we go to Yahoo Finance and we look at a ticker like SH, this is an index fund that does the opposite. So it's an inverse ETF of the S&P 500. So if the stock market's going up, this loses money, whereas if the stock market's going down, this makes money. So you can see over the past six months, looking at the chart, uh, when we had the crash in March, you can see this spiked. And then since we've had the upswing in the markets, it's come back down. So this is a good way to play short-term moves. But if you look at a five-year chart, right, the market tends to gradually go up over time because businesses are improving. And that improvement as well as increase in profits is making the stock price go up over time because these businesses are making more money, they're investing in the business itself to continue to grow. So with all of that progress, with all that innovation, the stock market over time is growing. So by shorting, you wanna really do it on a short-term basis, not over the long-term. Now, so this is you know one ETF. If you want to go check out this website, which I'll put in the comment section below or the description this basically shows you all the different inverse etfs that you can play on different indexes so normally there isn't going to be an inverse etf on a specific stock usually that's going to be on an overall index because there's more of a market for it so someone has created a fund around it the second strategy that you can use to make money to the downside is buying put options now at first options can seem scary but once fully understood, you realize that you can control the amount of money that you could basically potentially lose, as well as you understand that when it comes to capital allocation, actually using options is more efficient and it provides pro proper leverage if you wanna use it and know how to use it. So they can be risky if you don't fully understand them, but they can also be extremely useful for hedging your overall portfolio or potentially making bigger gains with less capital invested. So we're gonna hop over to the computer and take a look at what a put option is from the definition side, as well as taking a look at a real life example so you have an understanding of how to put on that trade as well. As I said, put options can seem confusing at first, so let's go to the definition on Investopedia to read off that, and then we'll look at a specific example to give a better visualization of how a put option works. 
So what is a put option? A put option is a contract giving the owner the right, but not the obligation, to sell or sell short a specified amount of an underlying security at a predetermined price within a specific time frame. The predetermined price the put option buyer can sell at is called the strike price. So let's take a look at Robinhood to look at a specific put option and kind of show how it works. So right now we're looking at a Coca-Cola put option chain. And there's a couple things to pay attention to that we talked about in the definition. One, the share price that it's currently trading at. Two, the expiration date up here. So that's when the option expires. And then three, the strike price over to the left down here. So when you hear someone say a 43 put with an expiration of June 19th, 43 put, that's the strike price. And basically that would be an out of the money option. So I also wanna talk about out of the money options, at the money, and in the money to give you an idea of the difference between all three. So out of the money would mean a put option where the strike price is below the share price. And at the money option would be the strike price and share price are the same. And then in the money would be a strike price that is above the share price. And this is all for put options. So what happens with an option and how you make money is let's say you bought this $43 put option for $1.15. So let's expand that. So another thing to understand is the Greeks. And with this video, I'm not gonna go into every little detail about the put option. You'll have to look up another video or another article or maybe a future video from me, but we're gonna talk about some of the main things. So the Delta here, you can see for every dollar move in the share price of Coca-Cola, so if it goes down a dollar, you basically make money. But the Greeks tell you how much money you're gonna be making. So the delta of minus 0.3 means for every dollar moved down, you'd make $30, right? Another thing to keep in mind would be the theta, which is really the time decay. So as we said, there's an expiration to an option. So you have to be right within a certain period. Otherwise, the value of your option just deteriorates. So that's part of the premium that you're paying is this time decay. So for every day that, let's say the, the share price didn't move at all, it just stayed at 45.50 up until June 19th, every single day you would lose $2. And that's the other thing with all this, the option as well as all these Greeks, because each contract represents 100 shares, you just have to multiply it by 100 to get uh, the true dollar value. So when I say $1.15 for this put option, Really, it's $115 when you buy it. And the other thing, when you're, when you're just buying put options, the max loss that you can have is what you pay for the premium when you open the trade. So that gives you an idea. Basically, you make money. Um, the in the money options are gonna be the most expensive. At the money is gonna be less expensive. And then out of the money is gonna be the cheapest. But then when you also think about those three, out of the money is the most risk and the the highest risk of you basically uh, having the option expire. So that's kind of what you're you're paying for. In the money is uh, more guaranteed profit when the share price is going down because you have more delta. Hopefully that made sense. Um, obviously, like I said, I would have to go into further detail with more examples, but I don't wanna make this whole video about put options. This is just an option where you can make money to the downside. And the last strategy, the third strategy for making money on the downside is selling a credit call spread. So jumping back into options, this is another strategy where you can make money to the downside, but it's slightly different than the put option that we were just talking about. So we're gonna take a look at a credit call spread to see what exactly that is, and then how to set that up in a brokerage account kind of the pros and cons for setting up that strategy versus just buying the open or I guess not open but the naked put option so let's jump again over to the computer and take a look at credit call spreads with a credit call spread it involves buying an option as well as selling a call option so both options are gonna be call options. They have the same expiration date, but what happens is you're selling one option that is more expensive, and then you're buying a call option that is less expensive. 
So when you enter the trade, it's a net credit because you're selling the one that's more expensive. So when you enter the trade, you have a maximum profit and then you also have a maximum loss because the overall trade is fixed. So to determine what your max profit is, it's just the credit that you receive for putting on the spread. And the max loss is the width of the strike prices. So if you have a 50 call and a 55 call, the width would be $5 wide. And let's say you collected $2 on that spread when you sold it. So max profit would be $200, and then the max loss would be 300, so 500 minus the credit received. So let's take a look at Robinhood to look at a specific example around Coca-Cola. So we're back in Robinhood and we're looking at Coca-Cola once again. And for this situation, we're looking at the call side. So we have the expiration of June 19th. The share price is still 45.50. And what we're going to do is sell the more expensive call. And then with the same expiration, we're going to be buying a further out of the money call. So you can see over here, it automatically knows that you're trying to sell a credit call spread. And the difference between these two calls is your credit that you're receiving. So 19 cents. So this would be the amount that you can make on the trade is $19 and the max loss would be the difference between the strike prices, so 50 and 52.50. So that's $250 minus the 19 cents would be your max loss because you never have to give back the 19 cents. Um, really, that's what you receive up front when you sell the premium. It doesn't sound like a great trade, but this is just to illustrate the point of how a credit call spread works. So how you make money with a credit call spread now, if the share price stays the same, right? And both of these call options, because they're out of the money, they're slowly losing money every single day through that theta that we were talking about. So this option would expire worthless and this option would expire worthless. At the end of the day, you would still have that 19 cents that you get to keep. The other way that you can make money is if the share price goes down, both of these calls lose value and instead of the uh, the credit spread selling for 19 cents it could be selling for 10 cents so you could buy it back before the expiration and you would collect the basically the difference and you would make a profit of nine dollars one thing to bring up is assignment risk so let's say the share price is at 55 dollars and both of these calls are in the money then what would happen is as you sell this 50 dollar call spread someone would exercise that and you would be required to sell $5,000 worth of stock to them. But then you also have an in the money call option at 52.50. So you'd be able to buy at 52, uh, basically $5,250. So the difference between that is the 250 loss and it'd be the same thing. Basically the max loss is 250 minus the 19 cents. Now, another situation that could happen would be if it ended up where the share price was $51 and only one of these options is in the money, the one that you sold short. In that situation, you'd be required to buy those shares, whatever, you know, at the $51 and then sell it to the option owner at 5,000. So in order to avoid this assignment risk, what you can do is, you know, trade the, or basically trade out of the position before it gets closer to expiration because not a lot of people are going to be exercising the options earlier than the expiration just because of that time value that's still in the option price. So you can avoid it basically uh, almost all the time by uh, going ahead and closing out the trade via the spread instead of you know letting it expire. So that covers the three different strategies that you can use to make money on the downside. We have inverse ETFs, you have buying put options, as well as selling credit call spreads. So hopefully you learned something new in this video, and if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, and then also subscribe if you're not for more finance content. Thanks guys, and have a great day.